Are you currently church shopping, looking for that right church for you or your family? Perhaps you've been looking and been turned off by organized religion. It happens. Let me suggest you try Unity Church. We are a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity. Many who have found us have said, I didn't know there was a church that taught what I always believed. Let's be honest, people shop for clothes, good restaurants, and the right church that feeds them spiritually. If you're seeking a spiritual truth beyond tradition, try Unity Church. Come join us. From Unity Church of Christianity in Houston, Texas, this is The Awakened Life with Reverend Howard Caesar. Unity is a non-denominational Christian church providing a positive, practical, and progressive approach to Christianity. Let's join the service in progress with the Reverend Howard Caesar. Uh, this may be apropos to share with you a little story about uh, Johnny who was at Sunday school and his Sunday school teacher, they were talking about prayer and so uh, he called on Johnny and said, Johnny, uh, tell me, do, do you say prayers uh, at your home before eating? And well, Johnny said, no, sir, we don't have to. My mom's a good cook. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> However, we are approaching that uh, special day that comes each year that we call Thanksgiving, and uh, should be no surprise that that will be my topic and my theme here today because I think it's so, va <clears throat> so valuable and so important, the whole idea of Thanksgiving and gratitude. I value it personally as being very rewarding and very much a part of my personal growth uh, to, if at all possible, continue to remember to build in me a consciousness of uh, all that one has to be grateful for, to be in those energies and carry that powerful vibration uh, of uh, thankfulness and gratitude uh, in one's soul is uh, so beneficial. I hope you do as well. Um, I think it's truly one of the very most important and most significant spiritual teachings that anyone on the spiritual path can learn or deepen or develop or integrate or incorporate all the more is gratitude because it really helps you deepen uh, your bond with the divine. There's only one source. We all draw from that one source. And as you step into gratitude more deeply and completely, you, you, you step more deeply and completely into your relationship with the di divine. You feel more attuned and at one with the divine uh, as a result of more and more uh, uh, entering into the consciousness of gratitude. Those individuals who are most consistently um, into gratitude are those individuals who seem most spiritually awake and aware. And those who are most awake and aware, we will notice, are the ones who are most consistently, as a result, uh, being grateful in their lives. I think of one person who is uh, recognized for her works and her writings as being uh, really a, a spiritual soul and, and deep and connected with the divine was Maya Angelou. And Maya Angelou, who just passed on this year, uh, she was scheduled to be here at our ministry and then took ill. And then, um, you know, a few months later, she made her transition. But something that she said that struck home with me around this that we're talking about, she said, let gratitude be the pillow the pillow upon which you kneel to say your nightly prayer. Let gratitude be the pillow upon which you kneel each and every night to say your prayer. Meister Eckhart, um, he, a uh, wonderful, deep individual, he said, if the only prayer that you say is thank you, that's enough. If that's the only prayer, because it's so important, uh, it's heart opening, uh, it connects you to the divine. One of my favorite verses, Scripturally is Psalm 100, in which it states in the first verse, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That essentially you enter into the gates of the divine through thanksgiving. Uh, you open the gates, they swing wide. You feel a sense of a deeper connection with your bond with the divine. It opens the heart. And so uh, it's so vital and important. Gratitude makes a person even happier and healthier. Uh, life seems to go better. If you can find authentic reasons to be thankful, 
for anything that's going on in your life, you know, or anything that's going on in the world, really, and learn to put your attention there on whatever good you can find. There's all kinds of data out there that says how much better off you will be by doing so. There is recent studies and research that has been done on gratitude itself. Uh, there were some studies that were done uh, that show the profound effects of living from gratitude as opposed to the opposite. In one study was done by a fellow from the University of California in conjunction with another individual from the University of Miami, and they participated uh, by having random assigned participants given uh, one of three tasks. Uh, each week, participants were to keep a journal and uh, they had three groups. And one group uh, briefly was to describe five things that they were grateful for that had occurred during the previous week. So in other words, they would just reflect on, on the week and what it is that they were grateful for, and they'd write it down. And then another group recorded the five hassles that seemed to annoy them during the pre previous week. And then a third group was simply to write down whatever events or circumstances that seemed to stand out uh, during that previous week. They weren't told whether to be positive or negative. And so 10 weeks later, uh, participants in the gratitude group uh, felt better about their lives as a whole. There was some way in which they measured it and said that uh, there was a full 25% happier than any of the others, uh, certainly in the Hasselt group. And they reported uh, fewer health complaints. They're just happier and healthier uh, people, and it was measurable. There was a later study that was done, and people were asked to write every day, not just once a week, but every day about things that they were grateful for. And uh, being that it was a daily practice, it de definitely led to uh, greater increases in uh, gratitude. And um, there was another benefit that they found in those who were doing this, and that was that um, the participants reported that they just ha had um, a, a sensitivity to helping others. Uh, that uh, there was uh, a tendency to have, want to have emotional support and help uh, be, be given. They're coming from their hearts. And then uh, still one other study was conducted for some people that had health challenges in, in the area of um, neuromuscular disorders. It was like post-polio symptoms. And uh, they were asked to jot down their blessings nightly. And compared to the group that was not asked to do this, uh, this gratitude group reported that uh, they uh, had more hours of sleep, they were woke more refreshed uh, from all their symptoms. It didn't affect them like they had uh, in the past. They felt more refreshed. There was more satisfaction with their life. Uh, there was greater optimism. They felt more connected to others. All these things were reported. So what I'm saying here, people, is, um, gosh, gratitude is a life-giving energy. It's something that we consciously want to take time to do and to realize that it's important. It's not just for one day of the year. It's something that we want to cultivate along our spiritual path and uh, to be focusing on what it is that is positive in our lives, what it is that um, is good in our life, because we can always find the good. Uh, it is said that it is impossible, and it really is, it is impossible to be both grateful and depressed at the same time. You can't do it, you know? So if you're feeling down and low, the thing you want to do is to pause and start counting your blessings. And even though the things may be dark and dreary in your life at the time, and even though it may be difficult, the benefits are tremendous. It's what will move you forward and up and out. It's impossible to be grateful and depressed at the same time. And so when you are knocked down by life, you know, if you're at all able, um, even if it's only small things, just focus on them and you will be able to get back up. The energies will begin to take you back up. It is said some people grumble and complain that roses have thorns, and others are grateful that thorns have roses. <laughs> and Jesus, of course, taught the importance of giving thanks and of acknowledging God and acknowledging our source of good. 
and all the good that has come. And one of the Bible stories that uh, makes that very evident is the story of the ten leopards, which is found uh, in Luke 17. And uh, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and he stops off in this village. And in this village, he met ten lepers. And um, they were apparently waiting for him, knew him. He was coming on that trail. And uh, they called out to him from a distance and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them that they should go uh, and show themselves to the priests. And so they turned and, and headed that way. And as they went, it says, they were cleansed. And apparently all of them but one kept on walking, kept on going. Um, and there was one that turned back and fell at the feet of Jesus, expressing tremendous gratitude and thanksgiving. Uh, for his healing. And then Jesus said, as the passage states, uh, weren't there ten that were cleansed? You know, where are the other nine? Did no one return to give praise except this one? And he said to the one, rise and go your way. Faith has made you well. Now, it's a powerful passage, and of course he's really stating the importance of giving thanks. It's pointing that out. But when he also says, you know, rise and go your way, it's, I think, a, a deeper statement there. Uh, it has a depth of meaning. It's even perhaps metaphysical, if you will. Because when we have some good come to us, you know, and we remember, we remember to give thanks, that very dynamic itself will cause us to rise up and go forward in our lives. It will, it will take us to a higher place. We will rise up, and we will be different for it if we remember to do that on a regular basis. So gratitude will always help us rise up, always help us go forward as a spiritual being and in our life. It will prevent us from becoming stuck in a low place, imprisoned in whatever circumstances that are difficult that may come along. Even the animal kingdom, many of them know how to be thankful and grateful. How many of you have a, a puppy or a dog or a cat that, that expresses thanks to you, right? You know, I know it's love, but gratitude is love. And gratitude comes with joy. It's all in the same package. It really is. I love the story about this uh, whale, uh, a female humpback whale that had become entangled in a web of, cra of crab traps and lines and so forth. And it was weighed down, this female humpback whale, by hundreds of pounds of traps and hundreds of yards of rope and line that was wrapped around her body and her tail and her torso and even into her mouth. And there was a fisherman that spotted her just east of the Farallon Islands outside of Golden Gate and radioed for help. And within a few hours, there was a rescue team that arrived at the location where this whale was. And they found and realized that the only way they could save this whale was to actually have a dive team go down and begin to cut the whale free. And that that was a very dangerous proposition because one slap of the tail could kill a diver very easily. And so they went, dove down, and they worked for hours, and they had these curved knives and things, and, and eventually they freed the whale. And when she was set free, uh, the divers say, she swam in what seemed like joyous circles, splat, splat, you know, splapping her tail and just around in circles of joy that she was now free. And uh, the beautiful thing is, after she did that, she then came back to each diver and went up to each one and just nudged them gently with her snoot and gently pushed them to let them know, like, thank you. Um, thanks for, my, for helping me. And uh, some of them said that it was the most incredibly beautiful experience that they'd ever had. And the one diver that was cutting the rope out of the whale's mouth was right there in the eye, was looking at him the whole time <laughs> while he was cutting. And uh, he said he felt like he had a connection with that whale in a, such a way that he will never be the same again. Gratitude. Nine lepers didn't come back and say thank you. This whale knew enough to come back and say thank you. It's, it's our nature, really. 
may we all be surrounded by people who may help us get untangled from the things that bind us. And may we help and be inclined to help others get untangled from whatever it is that they may be going through and be binding them and have them seemingly stuck and weighed down. And if it is us that is being unstuck or untangled, you know, let us not forget to give the people the experience of being given gratitude, being given the experience of receiving gratitude. Uh, it opens the hearts. It, it connects one uh, together as one. Um, you know, in the studies that I mentioned earlier, they also found that those who were in the gratitude group um, had the spouses of those in the group uh, reporting that there was a difference, uh, that their, the participants, their focus was um, such that now they were more pleasant, they were more upbeat, and uh, they displayed just a greater sense of well-being, were easier to be around. Um, some of you are familiar with the work of Dr. John Gottman out of the University of Washington, and uh, he's been researching marriages for the last two decades and more, and the conclusion that he has come to from his research is that unless a couple is able to maintain a high ratio of positive to negative encounters of five to one or greater, it's likely that the marriage may not last. And he says that he can predict with a 90% accuracy, often after only three minutes of meeting with a couple, by observ uh, observation, which marriages are likely to flourish and which ones to flounder. And that his formula, is that for every negative expression, meaning a complaint, a frown, a put down, an expression of anger, that there needs to be about five positive ones, which would be smiles, compliments, expressions of gratitude, appreciation, things like that. So again, interesting, those kinds of levels of study and research that are happening. We impact one another. William Arthur Ward, he said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping up a present and not giving it. If you're feeling gratitude, by gosh, by golly, express it. It's so important. In our human relationships, the energies of gratitude can play a role you know, in their success and happiness and their fulfillment. But there isn't really any area of life, really, that one can't cultivate a sense of gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation, whereby one honors the divine. There isn't anywhere one can look where one's not able to really find a way to be grateful. I love what Thomas Merton says about this. Uh, he put it so succinctly. What he said was, to be grateful is to recognize the love of God in everything, in everything he has given us. And he has given us everything. Every breath we draw is a gift of his love. Every moment of existence is a grace, for it brings with it immense graces from the divine. Gratitude, therefore, takes nothing for granted, is never unresponsive, is constantly awakening to new wonder, to praise of the goodness of God. For the grateful person knows that God is good, not by hearsay, but by experience. And that is what makes all the difference. Very powerful. I love what he's saying. Gratitude takes nothing for granted. Don't go through any day taking this life, the gift of life, for granted. Never be unresponsive, be responding. It's because our, res our responsiveness with gratitude will basically cause God and the universe to respond all the more, you see? It opens a person up to a flow of God's good. As the psalmist states, you know, we enter into the gates with thanksgiving. And so the open, opening of the spigot of God's good is really brought about through uh, gratefulness. And Jesus in the feeding of the multitudes uh, was again a great lesson here on this. We all remember the story and uh, the lesson 
in it is really the importance of being thankful for what one has, what we have, you see. He had, as the story goes in the passage, um, which is found in Matthew 15, he had compassion on the multitude. They hadn't eaten for three days. And so Jesus asked how much of the disciples, how much of the food they had, and he was told that they had seven loaves and two fish. And so he told the multitudes to sit down. And then he took those loaves and fishes that he had, and he gave thanks. And having given thanks, he gave to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. Jesus kept giving to the disciples, and the disciples kept giving to the multitude, and they all ate. They all ate. And the lesson here is that we are not to focus on what one does not have. Jesus was able to focus on what he had, and he was thankful for what he had. And what did that do? It multiplied what he had, and that's the principle of gratitude, really. And if we focus more and more on what we don't have, we get to have more of not having. <laughs> that's the principle. So cultivate the tendency or the intention to be grateful for everything that comes into your life. And that means even the things that you may think were negative, you know, mistakes that you made, things that went wrong. There might be something that you learned, something, some lesson, some morsel, some seed of something that you were able to take with you. And it's so valuable as a soul to begin to learn to look at every experience in that way, as opposed to just taking it as a memory of something awful. Find something the seed of good in it, because all things have contributed to your advancement, you know, if you are willing to seek and find that seed that was in the experience. There's a lady that I came across. Um, she was, up until February, uh, the world's oldest known living Holocaust survival, survivor. Her name was Alice Herz Summer and she passed on in February at the age of 110. And uh, she was an amazing soul, and I was fortunate enough, I came across a book uh, that captured her story. It's called A Century of Wisdom. And I also caught a little interview that was done uh, when she was just approaching, just before her 108th birthday. There was a video of her. She had been born in 1903, and uh, in Prague, she studied at the Prague German Conservatory of Music. She became a concert pianist. In 1942, her family was rounded up by the Nazis, and her parents were killed. And she and her five-year-old son uh, were taken to a concentration camp where they were, for two plus years, uh, sleeping on a cold dirt floor. Um, cold, uh, not being fed sufficiently at all, hungry all the time, and uh, she found a way to survive and to help her son do the same. And uh, she said that she would find joy somehow in every day, uh, something to be thankful for. Uh, she said, I was always laughing, finding something to laugh about, so my son, you know, a child of the age of five, or six will reflect its mother in the situation that it's going through. And so uh, she found things to be joyful about or laugh with him about. And in her German accent, she said, I, I know about the bad, but I look to the good. And people say, this is terrible, but it's not so terrible. She said, I was optimistic. Maybe we don't need food if we have something spiritual. She made it through that experience. At 83, she had cancer. And uh, as she was telling about it in the interview, at 83, she had cancer. I went and had surgery. And she says, you know, I'm still alive at 108, you know. And she just was so vibrant. And uh, she said, I'm grateful that I learned to be thankful for everything to see the sun, to see a smile. She said, everything is a present, meaning everything is a gift, everything. She had that. She, she was still playing the piano three hours a day at 108. And in the video, she went to the piano, nimble and vibrant and playing the piano. She said she has a powerful belief in music and in God. She says, I'm Jewish, but Beethoven is my religion. 
<laughs> but we resonate with her saying, I know about the bad, but I look for the good. And I learn to be thankful for everything, and everything is a present, a gift, such valuable. She was vibrantly alive, and, and, and there she was uh, in a tiny flat living in London alone with no assistance at 108, okay? She is the kind of lady uh, that, through all seasons, was able to be vibrant and alive and grateful. Uh, something that Khalil Gibran, some of you are familiar with his writings, something that he wrote um, that fits this lady, it goes like this. And when you crush an apple with your teeth, say to it in your heart, your seeds shall live in my body, and the buds of your tomorrow shall blossom in my heart, and your fragrance shall be my breath, and together we shall rejoice through all the seasons. That lady through, went through a lot of seasons, a lot of dark, cruel, wintering times, but she never lost a sense of who she was. She never lost a sense of the value of being grateful, of seeing every day as a gift, a present, something wonderful through all the seasons of her life, and it paid off. We would be wise to, at the end of each day, Make note of three, four, five things to reflect on to be grateful for. Or if it's not at the end of the day, begin your day with that energy as well. And practice as well giving and expressing your appreciation and gratitude to people. When it comes up, don't let it be a gift or a present that got wrapped and never got delivered and be opened. Go ahead and express gratitude and appreciation to those people who are near and dear to you in your life. Or, or anything. Somebody smiles and you say, you have the most beautiful smile. You know, it'll make you feel good and it'll make them feel good. It's the nudging of the whale, one to another. It connects us as one. And lastly, I invite you to, on a daily basis, or at least some days of every week, to go to the mirror and look in the mirror and look into your eyes and just give thanks to God for the spirit of you as a spiritual, eternal being. Look beyond the form. Look beyond any judgments. Just look into the eyes of who you are and see that God has gifted you to be an eternal spirit and how wonderful it is. Thich Nhat Hanh, who taught meditation and connecting with the divine, a Buddhist monk, he said, walk as if you are kissing the earth with your feet. Isn't that great? God bless you all. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We invite you to be with us again next Sunday at Unity we believe that God's presence of love and goodness is everywhere and that life is meant to be good. You can find out more about Unity and our teachings at unityhouston.org. Are you currently church shopping, looking for that right church for you or your family? Perhaps you've been looking and been turned off by organized religion. It happens. Let me suggest you try Unity Church. We are a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity. Many who have found us have said, I didn't know there was a church that taught what I always believed. Let's be honest, people shop for clothes, good restaurants, and the right church that feeds them spiritually. If you're seeking a spiritual truth beyond tradition, try Unity Church. Come join us.